if you haven't experienced a German Sylvester with fireworks, you've got it. Like you've got it one time in your life. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Montana and I was an exchange student in Germany. Now I make videos on German versus American culture and today I have a video about the New Year's differences in Germany versus in the United States and a lot of the like weird German traditions when it comes to Sylvester which is the German phrase for New Year's Eve and then they have like New Year's Day as well. Some of the traditions are actually pretty similar to the United States like the New Year's Kiss and some of the other ones that I'll get into but there are definitely a few things about celebrating New Year's in Germany that was super different and super duper crazy. In my opinion, Germany celebrates New Year's 10 times bigger than the United States and I know that neither country is celebrating as big this year but you know maybe next year it'll be the same and if you were moving to Germany or moving even to the US, you'll know a little bit about our New Year's traditions. So the first thing that's different that I already mentioned is that in Germany they call New Year's Eve Sylvester. In the US we don't have another word, it's just New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. And then in Germany they actually say, they have a phrase, it's Guten Rutsch, or yeah, I think I'm saying that right, Guten Rutsch, and it means like good good slide it's kind of just a phrase that you say on new year's eve instead of saying like happy new year's eve or people in the u.s don't even say that like you know <laughs> we don't have a phrase but in germany they will say that and it just means happy new year's eve good good sliding into the new year i think that's the meaning behind it uh but people definitely do say it like if you were out i think just shopping. I was in Muller, I don't know why that's coming up. And the woman was like, Guten Roach, before I left and like took my goods with me. So it is something that people say. <laughs> in the US, you could say, Happy New Year's Eve, but no one says that. We only say, Happy New Year's, and we only say it once it is the new year. So if it's Chris, if it's December 31st, like we just don't really say anything. Another thing that I found super duper cool in Germany, like Germany just goes so all out for New Year's, and that's that we ate raclette. So when I was there, I went to a friend's house. There were like maybe 12 of us, and we ate raclette, which if you don't know what raclette is, it's like a cooler version of fondue that they have in Europe. Sure that there's some in the United States as well, but it's really popular in Germany. And it's this oven and everybody has these little tins and you put a piece of cheese in the tin and also like meat, there's meat and vegetables and sometimes shrimp, I don't know. You can have all sorts of toppings and you put it in and then you stick it in the little oven and it heats it up and then you pull your tray out and then you eat it with like bread. So raclette and then fondue. Most people know what fondue is. It's like a pot of water or a broth or of cheese and then you cook your own meat or skewers in it like you can dip bread in the cheese or veggies or meat and I read that the reason Germany eats fondue or raclette on New Year's Eve is because you're trying to lengthen the celebration because you're trying to stay up until midnight and dinner normally lasts like what 30 minutes so raclette and fondue definitely take a longer time to eat and it's just more enjoyable like sitting around with your friends. I ate raclette a lot <laughs> with my host family and then at my friend's house for New Year's Eve. Always delicious. I, I need to find a raclette set to buy and do with my own family here. <laughs> Another German tradition that I found super weird, but I, I don't know, it's just definitely a tradition that just goes on with time and everyone's kind of like accepted it. And that's that in Germany, they broadcast this really weird old movie. It's a British film called Dinner for One. And I watched part of it with my host dad. It's just like this old black and white film of this woman who's really old and like a butler and they're eating dinner on New Year's and alone. I don't know. It's it's so strange, but they play it every single year for New Year's Eve in Germany. I don't know if people actually watch it anymore, but maybe it's just like something that they turn on the TV while they're partying or like talking with people. It was funny to see because it's in English, it's British English, but it's not dubbed in German most of the time. I guess because you can kind of understand the film without needing the words. It's You don't need the words to understand the plot. So 
yeah plus everybody in germany basically speaks english but <laughs> i don't know how long this tradition has been going on for definitely a long time the next one that i have that you guys are gonna have to tell me if it's true or false because this is the first tradition that i found online that i did not experience and that's Bleigießen, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, and it said that in Germany they used to take lead and melt it on a candle and then drop it in cold water to see what kind of shape it would form into and then that would tell you about your luck for the new year so people could like read these metal blob shapes. <laughs> I don't, definitely did not experience that and it also, the website said that it's technically illegal now in Germany so people have stopped using lead and started using other metals or materials and still do this like Bleigiesen tradition. Please tell me if that's true. <laughs> that sounds really cool. And I would love to do that here. I just don't have any bly or lead. So there's three more kind of that I have. Some of them are more similar to American traditions. So in Germany, you do have like sect or champagne at midnight. I think it's a little different. Sect is probably like the German version and champagne has to come from France. So we do that too in the united states with champagne also at midnight you've got the new year's kiss everybody knows what that is like you just like hug and kiss your loved ones or your significant other and you do that in germany and also in the united states the biggest biggest difference where i think germany goes the hardest is the fireworks okay it, the fireworks kind of conflict me because yes they're super cool and in germany you set them off yourself which was so scary but it's also like bad for the environment, which really confused me because Germans are so environmentally friendly. But then on Sylvester, they're like, Psh, environment, goodbye. We're setting off a bajillion fireworks. Anyway, if you haven't experienced a German Sylvester with fireworks, you've got it. Like you've got it one time in your life, do that. And in the United States, most people don't set off fireworks themselves because it's illegal actually in a lot of states. So you can't do that but we will have like mega fireworks shows in parks or in big cities so they're definitely fireworks to see it's just we don't do them ourselves and the ones that you do yourselves are smaller but it's just more of a thrill because they're right there and you're doing them that's all i have for the german new year's side i will share i've got like three quick traditions about New Year's in the United States if you don't want to hear. If not, um, feel free to leave the video. So the first one is that in the United States we like to eat black-eyed peas, which I can insert a photo. They're gross in my opinion. They're not good. Like they taste really gross, but it's just a New Year's tradition that we do and I've eaten them pretty much every year. My mom always buys a can. I don't know why, just good luck. And then another one is that people sing this song, Old Lang Syne, and it's just a New Year's song. It's actually Scottish, but now it's very incorporated into American New Year celebrations. We always watch the ball drop, which I don't even know if they're doing this year because of Corona, but the ball drop is this huge ball in New York City and Times Square. It counts down on the hour, so then the ball just drops and everyone gathers, gathers in front of New York City, so there's thousands and thousands of people who do that. This year it's banned, so that's why they're not doing the ball drop. But when the ball drops uh new york city releases like all this confetti on the people who wait there thank you guys so much for listening to the differences in sylvester celebration or in new year's celebration between germany and the united states both of them are very fun i think germany does a better job but we'll see hopefully you guys learned something bleib gesund freues neues jahr und ja tschüss